Well, you know, the biggest ego trip going is getting rid of your ego. Your ego doesn't exist. There's nothing to get rid of. It's an illusion, as I tried to explain. But you still want to ask how to stop the illusion. Now, who's asking? I mean, do you think, in the ordinary sense in which you use the word I, how can I stop identifying myself with the wrong me? <laughs> well, the answer is simply you can't. Now, the Christians put this in their way when they say that mystical experience is a gift of divine grace. Man, as such, cannot achieve this experience. It is a gift of God. And if God doesn't give it to you, there's no way of getting it. Now, that is solidly true. You can't do anything about it because you don't exist. Well, you say, that's pretty depressing news. But the whole point is it isn't depressing news. It is the joyous news. There's a Zen poem which puts it like this, talking about it. It means the mystical experience, Satori, the realization that you are the eternal energy of the universe, like Jesus did. It says like this, you cannot catch hold of it, nor can you get rid of it. In not being able to get it, you get it. When you speak, it's silent. When you are silent, it speaks. Now, in not being able to get it, you get it. Because this whole feeling, what Krishnamurti is trying to explain to people, for example, when he says, uh, why do you ask for a method? There is no method. All methods are simply um, gimmicks for strengthening your ego. So how do we not do that? He says, you're still asking for a method. There is no method. If you really understand what your I is, you will see there is no method. So sad. But it's not. This is the gospel, the good news. Because if you cannot achieve it, if you cannot transform yourself, that means that the main obstacle to mystical vision has collapsed. That was you. What happens? You can't do anything about it. You're at your wit's end. What are you going to do? Commit suicide? But supposing you just put that off for a little while. Wait and see what happens. You can't control your thoughts. You can't control your feelings because there is no controller. You are your thoughts and your feelings. And they're running along, running along, running along. Just sit and watch them. Here they go. You're still breathing, aren't you? Still growing your hair? Still seeing and hearing? Are you doing that? I mean, is, is breathing something that you do? Do you see, I mean, do you organize the operations of your eyes? And know exactly how to work those rods and cones in the retina? <laughs> do, do you do that? It happens. So you can feel all this happening. Your breathing is happening. Your thinking is happening, your feeling is happening, your hearing, your seeing. The clouds are happening across the sky. The sky is happening blue. The sun is happening shining. There it is, all this happening. And may I introduce you? This is yourself. This begins to be a vision of who you really are. And that's the way you function. You function by happening, that is to say, by spontaneous occurrence. And this is not a state of affairs that you should realize. 
I cannot possibly preach it to you because the minute you start thinking I should understand that, this is this stupid notion again of I should bring it about when there is no you to bring it about. See, that's why I'm not preaching. You can only preach to egos. All I can do is to talk about what is. It amuses me to talk about what is because it's wonderful. I love it and therefore I like to talk. If I get paid for it, then I make my living. And sensible people get paid for doing what they enjoy doing. <laughs> so this is not, on a, you see, this is the whole approach here is not to convert you, not to make you over, not to improve you, but for you to discover that if you really knew the way you are, things would be, would be sane. But you see, you can't do that. You can't make that discovery. <laughs> because you're in your own way. So long as you think, I'm I. So long as that hallucination blocks it. And the hallucination disappears only in the realization of its own futility. When at last you see, you can't do it. You cannot make yourself over. You cannot really control your own mind. See, when we try to control the mind, a lot of yoga teachers try to get you to control your own mind, mainly to prove to you that you can't do it. There's nothing, you know, a fool who, who persists in his folly will become wise. So they, what they do is they speed up the folly. <laughs> and so you get concentrating. And uh, you can have a certain amount of superficial and initial success by a process commonly called self-hypnosis. And you can think you're making progress. And a good teacher will let you go along that way for a while until he really throws you with one. Why are you concentrating? See, Buddhism works this way. Buddha said... If you suffer, you suffer because you desire, and your desires are either unattainable or always being disappointed or something. So cut out desire. So those disciples went away and they stamped on desire, jumped on desire, cut the throat of desire, and threw out desire. But then they came back and Buddha said, but you are still desiring not to desire. <laughs> <laughs> and they wondered how to get rid of that. So when you see that that's nonsense, there naturally comes over you a quietness. In seeing that you cannot control your mind, you realize there is no controller. What you took to be the thinker of thoughts is just one of the thoughts. What you took to be the feeler of the feelings, which was that chronic muscular strain, is just one of the feelings. What you took to be the experiencer of experience, is just part of the experience. So there isn't any thinker of thoughts, feeler of feelings. We, we get into that bind because we have a grammatical rule that verbs have to have subjects. And the funny thing about that is that verbs are processes and subjects are nouns, which are supposed to be things. How does a noun start a verb? How does a thing put a process into action? Obviously it can't. But we always insist that there is this th subject called the knower. And without a knower, there can't be knowing. Well, that's just a grammatical rule. It isn't a rule of nature. In nature, there's just knowing. <laughs>